Hello everyone, it's Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today I'm here with Jack to talk about the biggest deck in format, Yveltal Garbodor, and how we are going to try and adapt current metagame decks and even look at a few pure counter decks to try and deal with this very powerful archetype. Do you want to say hi, Jack? Yeah, um, I think, he hello, I think Yveltal is quite clearly the best deck in format at the moment. Um, so we wanted to bring you a video because we've still got um, a month or so until Sun and Moon come out and then we've still got a couple of weeks after that until they're playable so we've still got six to eight weeks of the current meta we're in um and hence it and it doesn't look like you've going anywhere it's just getting stronger and stronger week by week um in all of these big tournaments so we decided um to give you guys an idea of what you can do to be able to deal with your your vessel um based on what deck you're playing and then like we said give you a few um alternative options if you just want to hard counter the deck Absolutely. So first off, let's look at the thing we're trying to beat. This list here is going to be Michael Pramort's London European International Championships uh, deck list. And it's pretty much now the standard list you'd expect to see coming up against um, a Yveltal player. I think mm -hmm. two Enhanced Hammer is now like solidly secured in there. The Escape Rope maybe is the most questionable card. Again, uh, Pokemon Center Lady versus Olympia, there's that debate going on. But everything else is textbook Yveltal for me right now. So um, the deck's based around having Garbodor to shot off abilities. And then you just have two decent attackers most of the time at least. Um, in Yveltal EX and also Fright Night Yveltal. And we're going to be looking at text to combat both of these main attackers really. Yep. So do you want to kick off with Volcanion? Yeah. Um, so starting off with Volcanion, it it's a deck that can if it um hits its stride immediately it can just win matchups against anything just by being super consistent and just having automatic power heaters uh, uh automatic steam up sorry but more often than not the Yveltal player is going to be aiming for that turn two garbador which is shutting off your damage boosts and therefore volcanian can start having um a bit more of a tough time just because they have to attach three energy themselves which is an extra 60 damage for the Yveltal player um for the exes at least and they're going to be playing multiple Volcano and EX down, so Fright Night's getting a lot of value as well. Um, so we want to be, like we've been saying, we want to be able to counter both of these. Um, so we've given, for each for each deck, we've given some trainers and some Pokemon that you can put in to try and um, help out the matchup. So first off, we've got Rough Seas. Um, Fright Night, obviously, sniping two Volcano and EXs um, is pretty painful. That's 120 damage across the board um, in one turn. But Rough Seas actually knocks that down to 60 if they've sniped two EXs. Um, obviously because, if they've sniped two Volcanian Exes, sorry, obviously because they're both um, water type as well as fire type, meaning that you can get the benefit from rough seas, um, and it can mean that big Yveltals later on that, that um, your opponent's been trying to set up to be able to take out these um, pre-damaged Volcanian, they have to put more energy on to be able to do so. Um, so I think rough seas is a really, really nice stadium to be able to um, throw down. It also counters their parallels, which can be an issue for you, whether they're um, reducing your bench size or reducing your damage further. Either way, you want to be able to bounce these as soon as possible, so Rough Seas is really good for that. Um, similarly with Delinquent as well, we've put Delinquent in here just because it's a nice card to be able to bounce um, a bounce parallels as well as physical copies of Rough Seas. Um, and also it can it, it, it acts as a disruption supporter, and every now and again it, it, that can mean the difference. Maybe your opponent's just waiting on that last attachment before they can start um, de dealing Frightener damage or something like that. And Delinquent can help in situations like that. Um, next up, we've got Enhanced Hammer. Obviously, uh, the whole of Yveto, um is very DCU-reliant. Both of the attackers are hugely... Um, it, way it helps their attacks hugely. It sets them up a turn early. Being able to Y-Cyclone between them to preserve them as well is huge. Um, and, and denying that with Enhanced Hammer is really nice. Obviously, the more energy um, the Yveto player has, the more damage they're doing. So being able to actively take 40 off the board... Um, wherever you want, especially if they're trying to um, prevent you discarding it with, by knocking out their active Pokemon or something like that. It means that you can take out the, the energy that their active Pokemon has if you're getting a knockout and also deal with some energy on the bench. So they're, lo they're losing on the whole more energy, um, which is really nice and sort of prevents um, them hitting the big numbers. Simil a similar sort of idea is that with Fury, uh, Fighting Fury Belt, meaning that you've got 40 more HP um, just means that the Yveltal player has to push for even more energy if they want to one-shot you. And if they don't want to, if they want to two-shot you, uh, you, um, you, you have 
you naturally have answers in your deck to be able to two-shot them because you can do 130 usually turn after turn. Um, this is where something like Olympia is going to come in as well. Just uh, being able to stop your opponent using Fright Knight to block your um, Floatstone Volcanium's active, meaning that you have to either find Ranger or find a switching card. Having Olympia means you've got a searchable switching card with VS Seeker if you discard it early. Um, also helps with healing some damage, so you can keep sort of keep momentum um, when your opponent tries to go more of a stally route with the, the well the value route with taking um, 60-60s with the Fright Night Yveltal. Yeah, really good stuff. I've just been toying around with Volcanion a lot recently. I've gone up all the way to three rough seas, and I just haven't looked back since. Uh, I really like having uh, that heal, especially when you have so many switch cards, so many float stones, and ropes and even olympia sometimes as well you get multiple uses from rough seas and it really helps out when they're trying to set up two hikos i think from that list as well enhanced hammers a big one to pick out i know in um the belgian metagame volcanian hammers is like a standard deck like that's the way they like to play it and i could definitely see volcanian making space for like two enhanced hammer so that they're not y cycloning and like always being able to because Volcanion is pretty good at maintaining two or three EXs for our game. Um, Yveltal is typically good at doing that as well via Wysite clone and stuff like that. But if you enhance Hammer, it's a different story. And again, like you said, minusing 40 damage essentially, putting you out of range sometimes, it's pretty big. Those would be the two ones that I'd look for most. And then there's Pokemon as well. I don't think Entei is necessarily a counter to Yveltal EX. But it's a card that I like playing anyway, for other reasons, like for Rainbow Road. Um, but just being a non-EX 2 energy attacker is sometimes just really good, because it's a non-EX that's in the active, so um, it's just forcing an awkward prize trade. It has an awkward amount of HP as well, um, not great for them to like start going in with Fright Knights. Also, for just 2 energy, you can KO um, their Garbodors quite quickly. So you can really combat them in that regard very quickly without sacrificing uh, an EX or getting it half damaged or anything like that. So I like the option for Entei. That's the one that I'm playing right now. And again, it's one of these techs that I really like. Salamance EX is the other option. Um, I know that Yveltal EX players do play Parallel City and they'll often do it um, on themselves regardless because they want the reduction of damage done to Volk anyway. Um, it's still awkward for them for them to play around. I think you can only play Salamence if you're already playing two Fighting Fury Belts for maths, because uh, then it's only three EXs on the opponent's side of the field, and you get one hit KOs. And one hit KOing Yveltal EXs is obviously crazy good, um, because Volk can't do it if it's ability locked, so Salamence fills that role where it can just blow something up that Yveltal can't really respond to. Yeah, I think both of those Pokemon are really... Whilst they may not be um specific Yveltal counters um they both put in a lot of work and another thing uh, like i don't think you failed to mention but it um is something to do with entei just being able to it just just the two energy is just so nice i know you mentioned mm -hmm. the two energy but being able to um often sort of set that up w w with um just an attachment and an elixir um can can just do so much it just yeah. keeps you sort of in the same pace um and i think it's probably it's probably the tech I'd choose at the moment if I had to pick between Entei and Salamence. Mm -hmm. um, but both can do huge work. Yeah, I like the two energy just because you don't want to... In other matchups where you're not ability locked, you don't mind power heatering because you can always power heater for like a meaningful amount of damage. But yeah. in that matchup, if they garb turn two, you don't want to power heater ever again because it's just too slow. Mm. So having a slightly cheaper attacker is nice. Okay, moving on to Greninja. A few people think... The Greninja matchup, like there's a big debate around Greninja and mm. this matchup, how it goes. Um, the Greninja players will say that they've got the uh, favourable matchup, the Yveltal <laughs> players will say otherwise. Um, in terms of trainers, tools, supporters and stadiums that you could use, um, Rough Seas I think is the stadium that most Greninjas should be playing right now. Uh, they've toyed with Faded Town, they've toyed with Silent Lab sometimes, but I think Rough Seas is becoming more and more standard. Um, there's also the healing alternative of Max Potion, which we've seen in Grafton's list. They made top eight in London. It played a three count of Max Potion, so that's also an option for you. Um, because when you do finally get into your break evolutions, that's a lot of commitment for Yvel Tully X to get over. So you can completely wipe them of a turn and keep going from there. 
Um, there's also the cool introduction of Eco Arm, which I know Jack you used uh, in London yeah. while playing Greninja. And yeah. basically, this is the same as a giant water shuriken. If your bursting balloon comes off, it's that 60 damage that you're looking for every time. And uh, because you're going to be ability locked rather than trying to deal with Garbodor, instead you're just going to say, well, I'll keep recycling balloons and I'll get the damage that way. Yeah. I think um, Rough Seas is. Uh, you, you obviously mentioned the how both sides feel it's favoured. Yeah. Um, but after playing Greninja against Uveltal a lot, there is... I, I, I do think it's favoured to Greninja, but the Greninja player has to know how to play it. Mm. And with cards like Rough Seas and Max Potion, um, it can it can really punish the uh, Uveltal player if they sometimes just whiff that one energy. Um, it can it can be huge, because like you say, 170 HP for one... Um, for a non EX is is really really big, and whilst you're not having um, abilities, this is why I played an eco arm in London. Um, I feel like in in the matchups where you don't have abilities, uh, the the extra bursting balloons are huge. Rather than running, I ran a three count of bursting balloons, so essentially it just took the slot of a fourth bursting balloon. So rather than having four physical copies, I technically had six, but I had to recycle them at the right times. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're under ability lock, you can do that, because you know you're never pushing to try and get these breaks out to be able to shuriken loads. You can wait until you've used all your balloons, and then eco-arm them back in. And it means that you still have an out to these um, ability locking decks. It's really good for the mirror as well because they can also ability lock you. Having six balloons instead of their four, uh, or over their four, is just it, it's just so huge. Um, so I think I think eco arm I really like, even if it's not a, um, a specific tech for you, Voltol. It definitely really really helps in the matchup. And uh, like we've been saying, rough seas being able to move between two or three breaks because they've all got free retreat. If you've got a rough seas up, it makes your opponents, your Voltol EXs, have to really work for their knockouts. Yeah. Um, and you can always consistently do 80, either 40 or 80 damage, no matter what, each turn. Meaning that um, you're, you're healing technically 90... If you've got three out, you're healing 90 before they're hitting the same one again without Lysanders or ropes or anything like that. So you're healing 90 and hitting 80 each turn. Um, and that actually does keep pace with your Voltol. On top of the fact that you're a non EX and they're an EX, you usually do end up winning, winning the trade. It, they often go ahead in the first three or four turns, but that's what Greninja, Greninja doesn't mind that at all. They run heavy Ace Trainer, they run heavy N, they don't mind that at all. So you've just got to adapt your deck to be able to accommodate with the speed that your Vettel can take. Mm -hmm. um, but I am gonna, I, I am gonna put it out there and say I do think Greninja is favoured if you have things like rough seas and have analysed the matchup well enough. Mm. Um, Going on to the Pokemon, this is another huge part yeah. of being able to win the matchup. Jirachi promo is huge because it, it just often buys you a turn. It forces a Lysander out of your opponent um, if they if they want to be able to deal damage. If not, you're getting a free turn of either healing or a free turn of being able to get a, another Greninja out or another Breakout. And that's that, those turns are crucial in this matchup. Um, if, if your opponent can overpower you before you can get two or three breaks out, then it's not difficult for the Yveltal player to win uh, just because they can deal a around 130 often quite well. Um, it's It can be difficult, but if they if they realise that that is their line of play, it's not difficult for them to do it if they focus their resources to it. Mm -hmm. And having Jirachi promo slow them down, getting rid of the DCEs makes, them, makes it harder for them to reach these huge numbers as well. And just buying yourself a turn, forcing resources out of your opponent, forcing Lysanders, forcing VS Seekers, it's just uh, it's just really really big in this matchup. Um, especially like like I'm saying, like I've been saying, as you can, it's just about outvaluing your player, your opponent essentially, and being able to just last that little bit longer than your opponent. And as soon as sort of it ticks over into Greninja's favor, it just steams ahead. Yeah. We've also got Beedrill X and Greninja promo, which are two um, big options. Uh, to be able to often help with um, the Garbodor that shuts off the abilities. Um, as soon as it, it, another thing is, if Greninja has its abilities online, it it just wipes the floor with <laughs> you at all. It's it's a hugely favourable matchup. So that's why you, whenever you see this matchup, your Velto players will always immediately just search for their Trubbish, maybe even two, just to make sure they have this Garbodor and they have it for as long as possible. Beedrill being able to get rid of two tools means that sometimes, again, it's forcing resources out of your opponent. 
means that um, sometimes if they whiff these resources, you do get your abilities for a turn or so, um, which can just push that extra damage that you need. Also being able to get rid of Fury Belts um, in a similar sense that one-shotting or doing 170 to a Greninja Break is difficult. Doing 210 to a Yveltal EX is still difficult. It takes a lot of resources. Um, if you compare it with getting your abilities online for a turn, you can do it so much easier. So being able to get rid of Fury Belts as well is really, really nice. And then Greninja Promo, doing that initial 20 means that you only need one Lysander to be able to Moonlight Slash your opponent's um, Garbodor once. You don't need a second Lysander to be able to hit them twice. Again, it's just forcing more resources out of them, forcing them to find a second Garbodor uh, or say, or, or put them into, into a position where they have to win in a lot less turns because you, you now have so much more value with your Greninjas. Mm. Aqua Shower can also help with just doing that extra 20 that you may need here, here, and na uh, here and there, but it's not more than anything. It's being able to not have to use two Lysander for the Garbodor, which I think is um, really, really nice. Yeah, because it's one of those things where, like you were saying, if they start developing that second Garbodor, it's almost like out of reach. You know you're never going to get abilities that game. But if you Aqua Shower two Trubbishes or Trubbish and a Garb, then it's still kind of up for debate whether it's worth going for that approach. So mm. it's a cool option. I think the other two Pokemon are more standard. I think if you're not playing Talonflame, you should probably play one Jirachi, one Beedrill. I like that because Greninja naturally plays two Super Odd anyway, when it gets to super late game, these cards just get better. If you can Lysander and use Beedrill when you know that they're low on resources or low on hand cards, you can trap a Garbodor for two or three turns. You've taken off their tool and then you can just spam Shurikens equally um, when it hits the late game. When they're low on VS Seekers for Lysander or uh, Ranger or whatever it is, that they, how they get around Jirachi promo, they just don't have that option. Um, so it's just good to recycle these cards in that matchup, I think. Um, mm. Even if you play Talonflame, I think the Jirachi is still a one-off because I think it's just that necessary for this matchup and also like Rainbow Road and stuff like that. Well, yeah, so. I was going to say it's a huge help for Rainbow Road as well. It means that you're um, able to deal with the amount of pressure they can mm. deal as well. Definitely. And it hits for weakness. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's look at Mega Gardevoir. And Mega Gardevoir, in my eyes, has really been underperforming lately. It's still one of my favorite pet decks. I think it's, um, since the start of the season, I've, I've ju I just think that Despair Ray is still the most incredible attack that I think I've ever seen. Um, so I'm always, I've always got my eye on Guardi. I always think it's, you can always build around it because that attack is just so good. Uh, you can limit so many options from the opponent. So the way we're going to try and improve our Uveltal, it's weird that a fairy deck has to improve a dark type matchup, but, um, one or two fairy drops in your list can really help out. Um, it just means that the Fright Knight is way less of a worry for you because um, you're pushing yourself back into a way more healthy range where um, you can be setting up a three hit KO on your own dude. Sometimes even then you can retreat and despair ray your heavily damaged Guardi and completely wipe those prizes off the board. So fairy drops are really good for that approach. Additionally, Escape Rope, it's normally already in Gardevoir as a one count, but pushing that to a two count um, means that you can just gust away the Fright Knight a couple more times, or you just have more outs to get that gust on the turn that you need it. Um, because a lot of decks are only playing two Fright Knight, it's rare that they'll get both out turn one. So Escape Rope normally is very handy. It often forces the Trubbish out as well in many scenarios, so then you can deal with the Garbodor in the ideal case. So... Um, Rope is going to be pretty handy, so that you're not worried about Fright Knight, and you can also deal with their other dudes, um, so that you can Mega Evolve up, and also just a real support account. I know this isn't a tech, but like, we've seen, I'm going to go on a mini rant here about the Dragonite Hooper Shaman build. We've seen the crazy engine of two Hooper, four Shaman, one or two Dragonites, and it's amazing, obviously. But at the same time, Garbodor. <laughs> Garbodor stops all these things, all these lovely combos. And Garbodor is in the most popular deck right now. And it was, I think, almost 25% of the London decks were you built on Garbodor. So um, a quarter of the time, your deck isn't functioning because you can't draw cards. So let's just sort of cool our jets a little bit and go back to an actual support account where we have the more traditional... Four Sycamore, one or two N, 
one hex or two hex sometimes, two Lysander. Let's just, let's just actually have outs for those moments when we do get hit with Garb plus N. Because um, um, the current Despair Ray lists aren't built to deal with that, really. So I think an actual support account is really my biggest advice for Guardi. Yeah, I think, um, like you said, it was weird that the the fairy type matchup has to deal has to accommodate for the dark type matchup um but i think that sort of inherently says how strong Yversal is at the moment mm -hmm. um and something that the actual support account i think is the main thing i want to sort of talk about um it's something that greninja has to play because they have they can't fall behind they have to be able to use a supporter every turn just to maintain the board um and sometimes Yversal can put that situation upon any deck they can set up so incredibly. You need to find just just a supporter to be able to find another Pokemon and start setting up yourself. So I think, like you said, whilst the whole Hooper Dragonite Shaman thing is really nice, when the metal was still a bit more undefined and Yveltal wasn't um, sort of in 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 its perfect place, it was a lot better because people weren't always playing Garbodor. People weren't always. Uh, didn't always have outs to be able to stop you from blowing up and then discarding everything and doing it turn after turn after turn. But now Yveltal has established itself. Um, I think this actual support account is something it's something that we're going to bring up a little bit later on as well. Um, it's just so, so useful having more outs. Mm -hmm. um, talking about Guardi on the whole, now you don't play this explosive Hooper Shaman Dragonite build. You can focus more on the fairy aspect of Guardi um and something that me and joe have been testing a lot with i know joe recently wrote a little article for his team max voltage gaming about xerneas mega gardevoir primal clash um it's just kind of taking the deck in a different direction it's still got the inherent strengths of despair ray being able to get rid of all of your lysander targets and force your opponents to either take one prize xerneas's or mega pokemon um but it's also got sort of Rather than capping themselves at one ten, between 110 and, say, 140, it's got um, huge numbers like Yveltog has with the Primal Clash Guardi, having 30 times the amount of fairy energy on the board with synergies like Geomancy and then cards like Mega Turbo and Max Elixir. You can hit, you can actually one-shot um, Yveltogs, which it, at that point you're usually the more favoured party because you have resistance and you have more health than them more often than not. You're not reliant on abilities. You're um, preserving a lot of your energy because you only need three on the Mega Gardevoir. The rest of it can be spread evenly among the boards, so they can't Lysander and take all your energy off the board. Um, that kind of thing. So playing Xerneas and Mega Gardi from Primal Clash, um, I think, is definitely a really, really good way to go with the deck. And it's the the deck I pref the way uh, I would play Gardi at the moment. I played it this weekend and had a lot of fun with it. Um, and I think. It, it that those two or that whole concept in itself um, makes Guardi's matchup a lot, a lot stronger because coupled with the resistance that um, your Velto players have to get over, um, it means that you you are much more of a threat rather than just threatening this 110 each turn, which initially we thought was really good, but actually um, your Velto can often counter that, but can can do more and like has the ability to do more things like that. So I think the the, the fairy energy way of playing this um, is now the better way to play it. Um, but if you're still, I guess if you're still holding hope, you could play e this kind of either. But Horlucha is something that um, is very reminiscent of Escape Rope. Like Joe was saying, being able to switch, um, switch things out and just force your opponent to perhaps promote something that they don't, don't want to promote, perhaps promote more energy that you're going uh, to be able to knock out um, a, a different EX or have to send up their guard, uh, their Garbodor or what, whatever. It's it's just a nice reusable tech that um, it couples well with things like Escape Rope or Lysander or Switch or whatever like that. It's it's just a nice another option to be able to get out of things like fr uh, Fright Night Lock, um, things like a big Yveltal that's just sitting in your face. It's just a nice little tech to have if you can find the space. Yeah, I agree. I think the Holucha only goes in the pure Steam Siege Guardi build, but 
um, it's definitely an option if you still want to go down that route. The main thing I like about the Xerneas build is that you have a Xerneas in the active rather than an EX in the active, so they're less incentivized to go into Fright Night because previously the double snipe was worth it. Now it's kind of like, well, I'm doing 40 to the active and it's completely irrelevant and it then gives the Xerneas player time to Geomancy like twice and then that's when the Primal Clash gets just too many numbers, <laughs> too much damage on the board and again, like a Fairy Drop just pushes you into a range where you chain two easy one-hit KOs and then you can just deal with a Shaman for game or something, so... I think that's a great way to go about it right now. Uh, it's definitely yeah. my favorite build, and you can check out the Max Voltage Gaming page on Facebook. Thanks for the shout out, Jack. I was going <laughs> to do it myself, but there you go. Right, let's look at more fairy stuff. Rainbow Road, and this isn't necessarily a deck that has a bad matchup against Yveltal, but there are still ways that you can try and push this even more into your favor, I would think. Um, first of all, the Xerneas Break is being put into lists regardless, just so that you have an out against Jolteon and things like that. So playing the Xerneas Break still helps out here because you go from 120 HP up to 150. Um, and this is just forcing more commitment into one Yveltal X that can then just get blown up um, in response KO, hopefully. So that looks pretty good to me. And then Galvantula, we know it's already being played a lot, um, but just using that double thread especially because they're trying to parallel city lock your side of the board um, to limit your bench and limit your output. Uh, actually attacking with the Galvantula can put them in really weird spots sometimes. Um, you can set them up for KOs if it's just uh, Yveltal EXs, or you can just pressure multiple Shaman or a Shaman and another Pokemon. So um, don't be afraid to just keep attacking with Galvantula. That can often be the win condition for Rainbow Road. Yeah, Galvantula is a really nice um, tech, and it's a, again a non -E it's another non EX that your opponent isn't taking two prizes on if they're knocking out. Um, so it's kind of it, if they're knocking out the threat, they're not um, like ramping up the pressure. So it it kind of works out both ways. Mm -hmm. Into the trainers um, again, all things that are either being considered or played at the moment, but we want to mention them anyway because they're kind of the out to being able to deal with Yveltal. Fighting Fury Belt, similar to the break, it just forces more resources from the um, opponent, forces more energy if they want to be able to one-shot you, and if they do, you can more often than not one-shot them back, just because Rainbow Road can hit huge, huge numbers. Um, EXP Share, again, being able to conser conserve your resources whilst forcing more resources from your opponent, um, it means that they can't get away with just enhanced hammering away your DCEs and hoping that you can't ever set up uh, Rainbow of uh, Xerneas in one turn. If you have EXP share, more often than not, you just need to find one fairy attachment, and they can't even ha uh, enhance hammer you later on either. So again, it's just something that helps in general uh, with Rainbow Road being able to keep up with t the two or three of Elto, um that your opponent will inevitably play. And once you've sort of been able to keep up with that pressure you're often down to one or two prizes, at which point you can just either get rid of the Garbodor or the Shaman or whatever they've got left. So just being able to stay in the game with things like EXP share and Fighting Fury Belt is really good. And again, Olympia, if they ever try and um, sort of Friday Night lock things in the active that have float stones or whatever, Olympia being able to not worry about that is really good. Um, the healing can sometimes be relevant if they're trying to... It, because... Uh, the Fright Knights are doing so much less damage because of um, r resistance. It makes things like Olympia, with any healing, essentially, um, so much more painful. So any healing that you can fit in here is really nice. Um, but Olympia being able to have the a a addition of not letting your opponent Fright Knight lock you is just really, really good. And it means you can keep up the pace that um, Yveltal often has. Yeah, I think Olympia's the only card really out of the that we've got on screen that isn't always played in Rainbow Road. Um, I know people are dropping Fury Belt just to play the break, but um, Olympia is kind of the black sheep on this slide because you don't normally associate Rainbow Road with Olympia. But I think, like Jack said, it's a win condition that sometimes um, you can just completely wipe that off your concerns because you can just Olympia out of, you know, a chunky Vulcanian, even if it has a float stone on. So... I like that option. I think more people should be making space for it um, to deal with the influx of Yveltal. Mm -hmm. 
Let's move on to Mega Mewtwo. Do you want to kick off with the Pokemon? Yeah, so um, there's a couple of ways we can adapt the Mewtwo list to be able to accommodate for you, Voltol. Uh, Photon Wave Mewtwo is the Mewtwo that you can see on the screen. Um, the main thing here is with Photon Wave, you're actually reducing the damage done by your opponent's Pokemon, not done to Mewtwo. So it means the the, the Fright Knight Snipe is actually goes down to a 30-30, um, which is, is really, really big. It means that they're not getting huge value with this non-EX, um, and you have an out turn one just to stop your opponent sort of um, snowballing out of control, and by the time you've got your attacker set up, they've already got 120 damage on them, things like that. Um, it means that you can prevent uh, your opponent sort of snowballing. We've then got Weavile, which is a bit of a sort of off-piste pick, but having the tear-away ability means that you can run uh, sort of crazier things like Assault Vest as well as your Spirit Links, and as soon as you've Mega, mega Evolved, you can throw an Assault Vest on. Um, and it means that, again, it's it's all about the amount of resources that the Yveltal player has to um, expend to knock out your Pokemon. Yveltal is naturally quite an efficient Pokemon. If we can turn that efficiency um, on its head and make a deck inefficient, it means that you're, you're so much more favoured. So having that extra 40 HP um, is really, really big, especially as the more energy your opponent has to try and one-shot you, the easier you're one-shotting them. Um, so it work, works really, really well with a deck like Mewtwo, just because you're kind of both complementing each other's damage. But if you can reduce damage um, in the same way that they can add 40 HP, it means you go up to 250 HP technically while they're stuck at 210. Um, and again, it's just really, really nice for complementing each other's damage boosts. But in the end, you're out damaging them because you're um, able to reduce like damage as well as Mega Evolve for an extra 40 HP as well. Also means that if anything two two hits you, um, that it's reducing damage even more, and it means that Fright Knight is again just even less of an issue, um, especially if you've oh actually no it doesn't because you've got um, well if you're playing Garb okay that one of you will have Garb up like pretty much always so it can, it does work against Fright Knight as well so yeah it just means because um, Yveltal is so special energy reliant it means that they again just lose this value. Um, that or, or yeah lose this value that they would have against other matchups and then finally mr mime again being able to sort of stop your opponent's damage with the fright knight is really big and if they decide to activate their garbador and be able to do this damage with fright knight it means that your spirit links are back online so eat like both situations are a win-win um you're either reducing 60 damage potentially from your opponent each turn or then they're not going down the line of play which would say you have to mega evolve and waste your turn to be able to set up your attacker so either way it's kind of a win-win with mr mime no matter how your opponent deals with it yeah definitely i like um i like the mr mime tech it's a single card that again it just changes the way the game plays out oftentimes the aggressive turn one or two fright knight is their win condition against the Mewtwo players because you can set up not only the active, but oftentimes the bench as well. Mr. Mime changes those things. And like you say, they shut off Fright Knight. That's also a bonus for you because it's another headache that you don't have to worry about. Um, the Photon Wave, this is for the list that don't play Psychic Energy because um, then they're not playing Shride of Memories for um, damage change. So you can just slap a DC on and protect yourself from Fright Knight again, which is often the thing that worries you the most. I think the Weavile's experimental. I've not played it much myself. I just saw um, that I think it was a League Cup or something where this got some kooky results. I saw like a couple Mewtwo Weavile's do well. So I thought I may as well just mention it. Obviously Garbodor does shut off the Weavile. So I'm not sure how effective it is. But even just putting like an Assault Fest on turn one or something. Um, just to like a bench dude. Similar to the Mr. Mime. You can just protect things for a while. Uh, obviously you can deal with Garbodor because they're going to attack with Fright Knight like every time so they're going to make it a seven prize game regardless so you may as well just deal with Garb then do some Weavile shenanigans and stuff like that so sounds pretty cool to me looking at the uh trainers and stuff again we keep going back we keep going back to escape rope that Fright Knight only works when it's in the active so just gust out the way where it's less annoying for you uh enhanced hammer do basically what they try and do to you um limit their output so that they stay out of range and make sure that um why Cyclone isn't as strong as an option as it used to be. 
PCL is often seen in Mewtwo regardless, just for that heal, but it's a big card for this matchup specifically. And again, we'll go back to Olympia because Lysander and stuff's annoying, and that half heal of a PCL is also uh, relevant sometimes. So I think Mewtwo can tech its way into having a decent uh, Yveltal matchup. So um, it's one that um, was kind of off the radar. Then there was whispers of it coming to London, and a few top players did pilot it. Um, I think one or two made the top 32. Um, I think one even made top 16. Um, it was definitely shown on stream, and it was an interesting archetype, but I think um, it needed just one or two more techs to really put Yveltal in your favour, rather than just being balanced to be a good enough deck. And I think maybe now, if we focus more by playing something like Mr. Mime, I think that would be the go-to option, in my opinion. Um, mm. It can change things quite a bit. Let's look at Giratina Hammers, a deck that I piloted earlier on in the season, and it pretty much just fell off the map in London. I think a lot of people were just, like, scared of Yveltal and turned out to be the right call because this deck doesn't have a good Yveltal matchup. Even with all these techs that we're going to talk about on screen, I think Giratina Hammers still has to just live in fear of Yveltal for a little while longer um, until maybe some counter decks start popping up. And ironically, Giratina Hammers is really good against all the counter decks. Other than, um, other than Raikou, it's really good against the rest. Um, so maybe it waits like a couple of months and then comes back and is good. But for now, we can maybe if you want to struggle with Giratina, you can see how you're going to try and navigate it. So just like with Volcanion, Salamancy X is an option here, thanks to Double Dragon Energies. Um, again, it already plays a high Fury Belt count, so just punishing the opponent for having a board um, full of EXs. Giratina often plays parallel of its own. And you can Chaos Wheel to try and lock it in. So they can't get rid of their EXs sometimes. So Salamance can just blow things up. And that's always a good option. And there was even whispers of some UK players playing Giratina Zeb Striker for London. Actually a couple of my good friends. Um, good players, not just randomers who wanted to build this crazy stuff. Um, <laughs> potentially, if you really want to improve your Yveltal matchup, you, I think you need to play a thick line of Zeb Striker. Um, not mm. like a 2-2, I think it has to be like at least a 3-2 line, and you still need ball search in there, more than just four ultra balls, so that you can actually get them out consistently, like the stage 1's deck tries to do. Um, but I think that is, obviously just a fix-up striker just beats um, Yveltal no matter what it is, so that's clearly an option. And then looking at trainers just quickly, Olympia we've talked about a lot. Fairy Drop is actually an option for this deck, because you play double dragons, uh, so could fairy drop up a Salamence and then bop them again, or just fairy drop up Giratina. Turn that easy two-hit KO into a three-hit KO. And then simply, you're already Tina Hammers, why not just go up to like that second Flare Grunt and that second Enhanced Hammer and see how that does for you, where it's less likely that they can carry on attacking. Yeah, I think, um, like you say, it's still a difficult matchup, but these, uh, like, these cards are definitely going to help in the matchup. It, maybe not make it 100% like 100 more favourable um, to the point where you are the favoured matchup, but they're definitely going to help. Mm -hmm. On to Sizzle, Mega yeah. Sizzle. And Sizzle. On, I think um, I think Sizzle is, is actually one of the decks that can deal with um, Yveltal to an extent quite well. We've seen a lot of different Sizzle builds over the past few months since rotation. Um, we've seen the red card Silent Lab. We've seen... Um, just a more consistent sizzle, like just just making sure you get a consistent sizzles with hammers and things like that. We've seen sizzle um, garb. There's, like sizzle has been teched with a lot of different things. I think Pokemon wise, um, Golbat is really really good because it means you, you can one shot your opponent's Fright Knights once you've got your um, Mega set up. And with Silent Lab, you can still get your Mega set up. Um, and especially if they're also putting in their own garb so you can still get mega set up um relatively consistently and being able to push for um one shots against these non ex um fright knights it means that you don't always lose the prize trade especially as you're one of the megas that actually only requires two energy to attack you don't in it and your damage doesn't scale um you're only ever giving your opponent an extra 40 damage so you vote uh you vote have to put a lot of resources in to be able to one-shot a Mega Scizor. Um, and if they're not doing that, you're always hitting 210. You're also... All, uh, 220, sorry. And you're all... 120, sorry. <laughs> and you're also um, 
either discarding their special energy, which is really big, or discarding stadiums, which means that you can think about putting your own stadiums in later, or just in general stopping your opponent from getting having the stadium they want in play. Um, so yeah, Sizzle naturally can deal with it quite well, and Golbat being able to consistently trade against the non-EXs means that um, you're, you're not always falling behind like you would in some of these other matchups. Um, having that extra 20 damage to then overall do 140 with the Mega Sizzle to knock out um, a Fright Knight is really, really big. Similarly, um, with Mr. Mime, it means that your opponent isn't getting as much value. As we've said earlier on um, when talking about Mr. Mime, it just means that they're not getting this bonus 60 snipe, um, which is what makes Fright Knight inherently really good. They're getting 120 damage um, split into two sort of equal parts. Um, when it turns into three for 60, it's just a bad attack. So having Mr. Mime stop that is just is just really, really nice. And again, it's something else that your opponent has to deal with if they want. Um, if, and if they're dealing with a Mr. Mime, they're not dealing with a Mega Sizzle. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I like both options here. We've seen Silent Lab Goldbat obviously do well in Liverpool towards the start of the season. I think it was more so the fear of Volcanion that it fell off the map rather than um, it being too worried about Uveltal. I know they played a couple of Uveltal um, throughout the weekend and they were able to take wins against it because Golbat uh, sets up the map nicely for uh, the Fright Knight and you're not worried about um, the actual ability because Silent Lab's there anyway. And um, looking at the trainers and stuff, uh, PCL, we've already said Fright Knight's a big card. Additionally, because Sizzle crushes away specials, oftentimes their approach is going to be going for Y Cyclone. Um, so PCL works really nicely when they're Y Cycloning because it wipes away two thirds of it, which is great. Um, Olympia, we've said to protect you from, again, Fright Knight's ability, which is so annoying. Um, Team Flare Grunt as well, similar reasons for just how they navigate the matchup. A lot of the time it's them Y Cycloning because you only have two energy on you. Um, so they Y Cyclone, if you hit for 120, um, as well as the flare grunt, then it's stranded there. You get a free attack in, you get a free turn to PCL up or something like that. Or you can start Lysandering and setting up other things, getting them into range. So the flare grunt, just like we see in the Yveltal mirror matches, you can try and use it in Scizor as well. And then Giovanni scheme, just like the goal bat, where you push yourself rather than 120, you're now getting into range, um, dealing with the Fright Knight Yveltal. So all good means of dealing with it. Again, I think I like Mr. Mime the best. I think if I'm playing a Mega deck, I'm almost always playing Mr. Mime right now because obviously they can answer it, but you don't mind if they answer it because then it answers their own Fright Knight, which is often like the best card <laughs> against the Megas. So um, I think Mr. Mime's the one that definitely squeaks in um, if you don't want to play the Silent Lab red card Golbat build. So plenty of options for Sizzle. Still a decent deck, I think. Yeah. On to Mega Ray. Yeah, I think um, Mega Ray is the, the last big deck we're going to talk about. And then we're going to move on to some um, more hard counter decks. The first thing you can see here is a Diancy. Um, it's something that's been doing or seeing more and more, or a little bit of playing Ray more and more. I think as Yveltal's got bigger, people have started realizing that this Diancy is actually a really, really good counter um, to deal with the Fright Knight. Its ability reduces, as long as Diancy is your active Pokemon, it reduces damage to all of your Pokemon um, by 30. So it turns your opponent's Fright Knight that does 60-60 into, with resistance and spark, uh, Sparkle Veil, a 10-30, which is just awful. For three energy, that's do 10 damage to the active and 30 to a bench DX. And at that point, you're getting so much more value, like you're, you're getting so much more value than your opponent. You're having time to set up because they're not doing these huge snipes um, to constantly put, put you under pressure and threaten you. So Sparkle Veil is an incredibly good ability. Coupled with the resistance, it means that Fright Knight is genuinely a, a really, really sort of mediocre attacker in that matchup. Um, and then again, as we've been saying, Mr. Mime is a mega deck and it just kind of makes sense. Along with the archetype of Mega Ray just liking to fill the bench just because that's its damage output. Mr. Mime is just when you can throw on the bench turn one but not have to worry about your opponent um, dealing that extra 60. And if they do by locking in uh, locking out all of their abilities again you don't mind because you can just mega evolve freely which ray loves doing just because it can do it on the turn it's played as well yeah absolutely i really like the diancy because you can just make two of and then you protect yourself from any giratinas and also just have a much better dark matchup 
I think um, we've toyed around with a lot of things. We've toyed, toyed around with metal when um, we needed to protect ourselves from like Jirachi and stuff. You still kind of need that. You do sacrifice other matchups by playing Diancy, um, but it does just cover for the most popular one right now. So that's, again, an option. Uh, for me as well, it's still the Mr. Mime. The only reason you'd want to play Diancy over Mime is because obviously you can hooper out Diancy. Mm. Um, so it's you're like more guaranteed to find it in the matchup rather than you have to dig for your one of mime if you're playing mega ray and like you've got to find it turn one to get a lot of value uh looking at the items a uh, puzzle of time is one that's been in and out of rayquaza i know that um the liverpool list cedrics um did play puzzles i think puzzles are good um not necessarily just for this matchup but because yveltal's win condition is by kind of out resourcing you forcing you to go big and then hitting you with parallel city and e hammer and garbador all these things at once just sometimes overwhelm the ray player but just having more outs to answers as in i can recover my skyfield i can recover my dc more effectively this is going to really help you out in that matchup so i think puzzles may be sneaking back into rayquaza if you can find the spaces um again we've mentioned escape rope so many times but it's still an option for you and again, we're going to say, just like we did with um, Mega Guardi, that just playing an actual support account really helps out. People are trying to go super turbo with Ray. Um, there's nothing wrong with playing like a one-off Winona and just like getting set up turn one and just being happy with a normal size bench and just ending your turn going first by just megaing for turn and being calm and then next turn going nuts for trying to hit like energy and whatnot. So if you just play like up to nine or ten energy now and have an actual support account just forget dragonite even exists because it's an amazing card but there's just too much garb right now um i definitely not advise more than one dragonite if you do choose to play it um just because there's just too much ability lock that it's just not worth it i just rather have you know a full four sycamore one or two n even even in ray i think it's worth playing one or two n um and just have outs for when you get hit with that end combo yeah, I think, um, like you say, you're just slowing the ball. And, uh, like, again, with the puzzles of time, just having extra cards. Like, it, it's like a, it's like another, f technically, I guess, four copies of a card you want. Mm -hmm. So it's just more, more resources that your opponent has to get through. And sometimes those four cards, even one or two cards, can mean the difference between a win and a loss against you, Veltal. Absolutely. So those are the main archetypes that we wanted to talk about, but... If you really just hate Yveltal, there's plenty of options out there. <laughs> um, there are. So uh, we'll just breeze through a few of them. Um, Raikou yeah. Electrode is one that we've seen. It did well in Dortmund. Obviously, just Raikou hits for weakness and Fury Belting this guy up makes it even difficult for Yveltal to one hit KO. And yeah. even then, it plays like two or three EXP shares and Elixirs. So they'll just. An army of Raikou should just win the game yeah um uh, i'll I, go I through think... i'll go for a couple and then yeah, I'll yeah hand it over um plume box obviously jolteon is like awful for you Veltol. some of them play no answer if they are playing answers they have to find them under item lock oftentimes it's going to be something like you Veltol break or the promo dark cry non-ex um and they're mediocre answers at best so um as long as you can develop the item lock um you only really need to worry about the flare grunt um the enhanced hammers are obviously an issue if you don't get the item lock but those are then main outs to you other than that you can just flash ray your way to a victory quite comfortably and the same mm -hmm. can be said really for the pidgeot build um mm. you just have the jolty on doing things um pidgeot is even awkward because you have mirror move regardless and you sometimes play max potion to complement it and even ninja boy so I think those three are good old-fashioned hit for weakness and yep. you can sometimes not hit me back yeah um next up is the houndoom that you can see above houndoom bunnelby mill it's something that i actually tried this week um just after it did well in london and it has an insane yveltal matchup they they often just it, it we've been saying all the way through the video it's a resource game and houndoom just gets rid of all of them it's got hammers it's got all of this trolley stuff and at the end of the turn, you're just getting rid of two, the two top cards in their deck. And they very, very rarely can take six prizes anywhere near before you've mi either milled them or they've run out of energy or whatever. It's just, it's a, it's a really, really nice off-piece pick. If you don't want to go for the natural, oh, 
you're weak to lightning, so let's hit you with lightning things. Um, let, let's instead go for a different game plan, um, and it's one that people are less likely to expect as well. Like After it doing well in London, maybe people will think about it a little bit more, um, but it's not something that it will be the first sort of deck in people's mind. Yeah. Definitely. However, going back to the hit for weakness, we've got, as you can see, Raichu Golbat is just a deck that can hit for weakness. Being able to have your whole deck level ball searchable, um, essentially, is really, really nice. Circle Circuit doing huge numbers for just the DCE means you don't need a prior energy attachment to be able to um, deal with an EX. You're a non-EX, so they're taking one prize, you're taking two. It's just it's just nice like that. Raichu's are really... I think well, they were both released in the same set, and Raichu's kind of always been um, in the back of people's minds as a counter to Yveltal, just because um, of how like an anti Yveltal the card is. It's brilliant. Um Vespiquen Zeb Striker, again a deck that did well in London, um, meaning that you have, well, having Zeb Striker is just insane because it, it kind of means that you're, you can guarantee a couple of prizes just through Zeb Striker no matter what. So if you can find your, if you can navigate the matchup to be able to then accommodate these last two or three prizes you, just using your Vespiquens if you can't get back into your Zeb Strikers or um, you can't find your last Zeb Striker, whatever like that. You you know you can sort of guarantee on your Zeb Striker doing at least X amount of work in every game against your Veltol. Just because Crashing Bolt is such a good attack against your Veltol, guaranteeing 220 just because they have resistance, it means that even with a Fury Belt they don't live. So, um, it, you, like, you can always rely on Zeb Striker um, at least putting in some some work no matter what. Um, so it just me it, it kind of reduces your um, pressure on having big Vespiquens later on in the game because you only often need one or two to be able to just finish the game out. Whereas Vespiquen has always, since Battle Compressor rotated, Vespiquen has always had that issue of do I ever reach the damage cap in time with enough attackers left to be able to deal with some of these decks. And Zeb Striker like locks in two to three prizes pretty much every game, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, it's just. It just takes the pressure off of Vespig one. I like the Zebra a lot as well, just because it has 100 HP rather than 90. I think it's better yeah. than Raichu. I mean, Raichu Bats is a solid deck against a wider meta. Yeah, but, that's true. Um, the Zebra itself is, like, amazingly good at dealing with Uveltal because they can't parallel to limit your damage. It's just going to always get the KO for a DCE. And it also has 100 HP, so yeah. if they don't find Fury Belt, they can't even Y Cyclone. So, like, that's a big deal as well. <laughs> like, if they're forced to Evil Ball, then you bring up the next one, or you just bring up anything. They just commit more into one thing. Uh, so the Zebra's amazing for that. And the yeah. last one is also one that you might not expect as, like, a hard counter, but if they're not playing Yveltal Break, I think Gyarados has a very good time against Yveltal. Um, because it reaches the numbers very comfortably, as long as you have decent enough prizes. Um... And they just they don't answer you quickly enough as the Yveltal player. Normally you're four prizes ahead before you've even lost a Gyarados. Um, and all the fancy energy retention, I can take it to a long game, I can out-resource you. Gyarados doesn't care about that because it can win in about five turns. So um, without the Yveltal break, I don't see many ways the Yveltal player wins other than just an N is that painful that you get a few free prizes for, for a while. But as long as your Gyarados is built consistently, I think it's fine. And they're often scrambling so much just to hit elixirs and um, keep getting attackers going that sometimes they don't even have time to get Garbodor up by turn like three or four, unless they've naturally drawn really well. So even then, like Octillery can sometimes protect you from N. So I think Gyarados is just, again, I know there's a lot of lightning decks maybe creeping back in, um, but... Of the lightning decks that we're showing on screen, really the worst one would be Raichu Bats, but everything else seems manageable because mm. you're both you're either a EX against a non-EX or you're still non-EX versus non-EX, and Gyarados is really good at recovering um, its pieces every turn, so um, it's not like it gains loads of bad matchups, and Yveltal's a pretty good one in my book. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good bit of hate for Yveltal there. If you just <laughs> if you know that Yveltal is going to be super popular, like 25% almost in London yeah. 
is a lot of free games. If you're playing, I know it was nine rounds, but let's say it's ten rounds for a tournament. That's that's a, that's two to three free wins. That that's great. Yeah, <laughs> I'll definitely. take that. I'll take some free wins, please. There's um, been a lot of a lot of you vote or hate on places like Verbank and Hayfonte lately. So if you if you're if you find yourself in that category, pick up one of these decks and just see and just play against a Yveltal and you'll feel you'll feel better because <laughs> these decks have very very good matchups against Yveltal. Yeah. So we'll just do a mini little summary um, of what we've been talking about. The main things you want to deal with about Yveltal, the two things that you can try and sort of combat it in a general sense, is trying to heal off or prevent some of this damage that. Oftentimes it's the Fright Night Yveltal. The early game spread that it does is normally just so painful. So things like PCL, Olympia, Olympia also helping out with the switching aspect when you don't have Floatstone available. Rough Seas for the decks where it can work for you. Mr. Mime for Mega decks I think is going to be more and more staple and standard. And that Diancy as well. Um, maybe it's just for Ray. Maybe it even sneaks into things like Mega Mewtwo. Got like a fairy build even. Um, that could be cool to see. So... That's a big point for trying to combat the Veltal players. Also, PCL works if they're trying to set up Y Cyclone 2 hits. Uh, you can push themselves back out of that range, force them to actually go for a big Veltal EX that hopefully you can deal with. And then the other side of the coin is energy removal. Um, they're trying to be super efficient with their energy. Um, so just trying to put them back a peg or two, limiting their damage and just making sure they can't always stream attackers is a great approach for you. So Flare Grunt and E-Hammer, I think it could be coming more and more common to see. Yeah, definitely. And the final the final thought is don't overtech. Keep things simple. Whilst you want to be able to deal with um, your Voltol, and we've said how it's going to be two to three, probably two to three of your games in a big tournament, um, just one or two of these little techs can swing the matchup into your favour. And you don't want to take away from your decks good matchups or okay matchups just to beat your Veltol, because whilst we're saying that two or three of the matchups will be will more often than not be your Veltol, um, winning those three doesn't mean anything if you lose the next six because your deck's inconsistent. So yeah. don't sort of focus. Don't build a deck. Don't build your deck to beat your Veltol. Just add one or one or two of these counters that can just swing it into your favor. Um, but it still retains its core value of what the deck does. Um, and I think you'll see a lot more success when up against what is probably um, widely assumed the best deck in format at the moment. Just one or two of these cards. Um, and I think don't sort of limit what we've said to each deck. Try other things in other decks. Um, we're not saying these are the only things, but these are our like ideal... These are the, the ideal ways of being able to deal with Uvelto. But maybe you want to try some of these other cards in different decks and see how they work out just sort of know know the matchup um try try fitting it fitting in one or two of these tech cards and i think your percent win percentage against your Voltol will hopefully um be a lot better after uh, trying some of these cards yeah absolutely so that's gonna round up today's video i hope you enjoyed it it's slightly different from usual yeah. Um, let us know down in the comments how you're trying to tech for you, Veltol. Maybe there's something that we haven't talked about. Maybe there's one that we have mentioned and you absolutely love it and it's a staple card now you think in your deck. Maybe there's another rogue out there that has an amazing you, Veltol matchup and can also deal with other decks out there. Get it all in the discussion down below. Um, please leave a like to this video if you did. Uh, we'll do more in future if so, which will be cool. Yeah. Um, and subscribe to the channel if you've not already. For now, though, it's been myself and Jack from Omnipoke, and Thank we will much. see you guys next time. Cheers. Will do.